going on guys Johnny Bannon here and we're in a different studio the living room in my North Carolina house but we're still gonna do some security plus training so now we're gonna finish up domain 2.2 and we're gonna finish up by going over social engineering attacks like phishing vishing and smishing so let's go ahead and get started I'm gonna move my face out of the way and we're not gonna start on the check on learning we're gonna start right here at phishing so let's go ahead and go over it. So what is phishing? This is a technique where attackers deceive victims into revealing sensitive information or downloading malware by masquerading as a legitimate entity, usually through email. Major thing you gotta know with phishing, that is through email, okay? This sometimes can just be uh, an umbrella term for any sort of social engineering attack that gets you to do data exfiltration uh, that you're unaware of, right? But the threat vector, what we need to know for Security Plus exam, is email the transmission medium is email so different risks identity theft data breaches and malware infections there's always a running joke in cyber security that you can have the best defense in depth approach you can have zero trust you could have edr xdr dlp firewalls the whole onion layered of security and a single email will compromise your security that a user opens right so mitigation the best mitigation, and this is going to go for a lot of these social engineering attacks, is education, having the users be aware, and having them recognize phishing emails using, uh, you know, gamifying your user awareness training, making sure that people are actually understanding, your employees are actually understanding what a phishing email is and how to recognize it. Other technical solutions we can do are like email filters and doing some like DNS, maybe blacklisting or domain blacklisting on our emails so that before it even reaches the user, if it's from a, a well-known bad domain, we can just block it, right? So verifying sources before responding to requests. Again, that's going to be on the user. It's going to uh, be on you to make sure the user is educated. All right, vishing. So vishing or voice phishing, guess what, guys? The same thing, but now there's an attack over the phone, phone call, right? Not text message, not IM. We're talking on the phone, talking to a hacker on the other side, that could be using impersonation or authority or FOMO even to try to get you to give up some information, right? Usually this is going to deal with like credential harvesting. It's going to deal with them getting data exfiltration. So some of the risks involve financial fraud or unauthorized access to personal accounts. So when we talk about credential harvesting, right, that is somebody calling you, claiming they're from the help desk. And they need your credentials to reset so you can run payroll. Obviously, you may have some like doubts, like who on what authority. So then they do some sort of urgency social engineering principle. Where they say, hey, the CFO told me we need to get this done for you to run payroll. So we need to get this done, right? And that's how we can kind of use the human element to do our social engineering attacks over the phone. Then we have smishing. So this is SMS phishing, right? A form of phishing conducted through SMS or text message. This is, again, the main things are going to be financial fraud. There could be some malware infection, right? Sometimes, especially if it's a mobile device that touches the enterprise. A lot of times, this is also going to be for scams and credential harvesting again. So you can see in this little picture here that this is having you trying to sign in, verify your account. So you go in, you verify your account, quote unquote, I'm doing air quotes, right, to your bank when really they just, now they got your credentials, right? So mitigation, obviously not clicking on any unsolicited text message. If you're not expecting a message, don't click on any link in that message. Verifying the source. There are some message filtering apps you can do, but again, the number one thing, the best thing you can do for your enterprise is education. That's always going to be where social engineering, you want to do education when your technical defenses just can't work or they're not, you know, they just simply can't. You can't always be monitoring every message. And then if you're doing too good of filtering, you could potentially filter needed text messages. Like for salesmen that maybe talk to, or saleswomen that talk to all sorts of people from all over the country, right? Okay, so misinformation or disinformation. So this is the deliberate spreading of false or misleading information to manipulate or deceive. So this is sometimes done by nation states. And influence campaigns to damage reputation or to do public manipulation, maybe of another country or even a competitor, right? Okay, so impersonation. This is going to be like a social engineering principle 
a way that something that can help us in our attacks. So attackers pretend to be someone else, often an authority figure or trusted individual to gain access to information or systems. One of the risks is unauthorized access or data breaches. Really, this is just goes hand in hand with those attacks we just learned about, right? Them using impersonation to accomplish the vishing or smishing or phishing attack. So mitigation, have some sort of verification procedures. Again, it's going to always come up that awareness training. And of course, this is kind of a good mitigation for all these social engineering attacks is making sure you have two factor. Because let's say somebody gets you to give up your credentials over the phone using an impersonation uh, social engineering principle. One thing they can't do is steal the code. Unless, of course, they give it to you that you get in your two-factor SMS code, okay? There's just something to think about there. Having two-factor authentication should be on all your accounts. Okay, pretexting. What is pretexting? Oops. What is pretexting? Pretexting is, created a fab- is creating a fabricated scenario or pretext to engage a victim in a manner that increases the change uh, the chance, excuse me, of divulging confidential information. So again, what's the risk here? Unauthorized information disclosure, privacy breaches, and always, always, always training your employees to recognize suspicious requests. Another attack we're going to go over is a watering hole attack. So this is comprising a frequently frequently visited website by a target group to infect their systems with malware. So essentially think about in nature, right? Where the lions are near the watering hole, where all the, uh, the deer or the antelope uh, drink water from right they know they're gonna go there to get water so what do they do they hang out around that watering hole to attack them well guess what same thing in cybersecurity with this type of hack or attack we're gonna do some reconnaissance on a group maybe uh, a, a whole sector or maybe just an organization we notice that their employees or users always talk, go on this website from 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. so we're gonna try to infect that website knowing that they're gonna go there and then we can now exploit them that way. So we're going to target a specific group knowing that they're always going to go to a specific website. That is a watering hole attack. Typo squattering. So this is registering domain names that are misspellings of popular websites. And then when users do the human error mistype that URL, they're led to a malicious website that looks very similar. So what's the point of this? Again, doing that credential harvesting. So when they go to this fake site, and they log in because it looks legit, well, they just got your credentials to do malware distribution, right? So you can see here in our example, someone's going to example.com, but we put an extra E in there. We register that domain name to us, and then we can clone their website and now steal their credentials, okay? So some mitigation. If you know you're going to have a website, maybe you, like example.com, Maybe you buy the other domains why they're cheap before you get too popular, right? And you buy those, those domains and now you own them so somebody can't do a typo squatting attack against the users trying to visit your website. All right, guys. So now let's go ahead and do our check on learning. Let's going to open up our quiz here. Let me drag this over. All right, awesome. So now we're going to go over our domain 2.2. Human Vectors and Social Engineering Quiz. So question one, what distinguishes vishing from other forms of social engineering? So that's going to be that is through voice calls, right? So vishing is voice phishing. Oh, excuse me. Let's submit that answer. So yeah, we're going to go A, that's voice phishing. And guys, this is our practice exam software that you get access to if you do our self-paced or virtual training that you get lifetime access to with over a thousand practice questions. So pretty cool. And we're going to go through this software to test ourselves, right? To do our check on learning. So how does smishing differ from traditional phishing? So that's going to be that it uses text messages, right? As its transmission medium. Smishing, the SM stands for SMS. Question three, what is the intent behind a business email compromise attack? So something we didn't go over in our slides, so I'm glad we're going over this in the quiz to check on learning. So this is going to be either A, to flood a business's email server with spam, B, to gain unauthorized access to company networks, C, to impersonate executives and trick employees into transferring funds, or D, to encrypt company data and demand a ransom. So let's go ahead and... 
We'll pick A. The answer is C, actually, to impersonate executives and trick employees into transferring funds. So business email compromise attack. Essentially, what we're saying here is this is another form of social engineering attack that target is just the business email. So we have our explanation here. Let's say business email compromise is a sophisticated scam targeting businesses that conduct wire transfers or have suppliers abroad. Okay, question four. What is pretexting in the context of social engineering? So this is going to be C, fabricating a scenario to justify asking for sensitive information. So setting up a pretext, right, to actually conduct and be successful in our social engineering attack. So question five, what is the primary goal of phishing attacks? That's going to be to trick individuals into providing sensitive information. So any phishing attack is going to be really for one purpose is to trick an individual either to get something from them or to do data exfiltration. Okay, question six. What is the main risk associated with typo squatting? So typo squatting is going to be registering similar domain names to known websites for malicious purposes. That's going to be where we just changed the domain name a little bit. Now we own it. We put our malicious site, and now we can do something like credential harvesting attacks. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for Domain 2.2. I want to thank you for viewing. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And if you're an active duty soldier or reserve or National Guard, click that link in the description below to see how you qualify for four grand a year in credentialing assistance, where you can use your TA and CA funding every fiscal year to get free certification training, either from us or from other vendors. But trust me, you're going to want to go through us. So click that link below to find out. And I want to thank everyone for viewing.